Welcome to the Lead Women Voters of Snohomish County Forum. We are focusing on candidates who will appear in the 2021 primary election. This forum is for candidates for City of Mukilteo Council Position 3. I'm your moderator, Lynn Carpenter, member and former president of the League of Women Voters. Our candidates for City of Mukilteo County Council Position number 3 are Steve Schmaltz, Alex Krakow, Carolyn Doty Carlson, and Tim Ellis. The League thanks all the candidates for running for office and for their willingness to serve in the community if elected and for participating in this forum. It is the policy of the League to be nonpartisan. Therefore, we neither endorse nor oppose candidates or parties. We do take positions on issues that we have studied and on which we have uh, reached consensus. You all got ground rules for this forum, and let me just briefly go over the question and answer period rules. The first three questions have been shared with the candidates. They are designed as an introduction to each candidate's qualifications and strengths. I will pose the questions. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to respond to each question. The fourth and final question will allow 90 seconds. We're using a, a high-tech timer <laughs> that, uh, that uh, Mr. Kramer will um, signal you when there are 15 seconds left. And when time is up, he'll hold up stop. And you will need to uh, stop or I will stop you. The order of questions is this. I will change the starting order for each question rotating through each candidate to be the first uh, to, to get a chance to answer. And so let's begin. The first question goes to Mr. Schmaltz. What are the major responsibilities of this office and what skills are needed to perform them well? Well, thank you for inviting me and the rest of the candidates. It's, uh, it's an honor to, to, to be able to speak uh, um, this evening. The, the major uh, responsibilities for the city council, in my opinion, are um, setting policy for the city, as well as having a clear understanding of the budget process. And so we oversee the, the finances of the city. Um, we set the policy. Um, and sometimes the policy comes from the city itself, and sometimes it comes, it can come from directly from the, the council, like a council driven type of policy. Um, other responsibilities of the council are to um, uh, confirm department heads, but I also believe that the council is elected by the voters to represent the best interests of the residents. So thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Krakow. I you need to unmute yourself. Thank you for inviting me. The responsibilities of the city council are to understand the vision uh, for the future and what that will mean for the people who live and work in Mukilteo. And then to make decisions about laws, regulations, zoning, and the budget that support the vision and reflect our collective values. Uh, the skills to do to accomplish these responsibilities include uh, the ability to do extensive homework, conduct open and candid discussions with citizens, city staff, volunteer groups, and stakeholders. Listen carefully, ask questions, use data, and work well with the mayor and other council members to make informed decisions in support of Mukilteo's vision. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Carlson. Okay, they're unmuted. Uh, my, my answer to uh, the major responsibilities was short and sweet, uh, guiding the city forward. Um, the skills needed, I don't know if we're going there yet, uh, but uh, Alex did. So the ability to work as a team uh, good. I've got notes off the side. I'm so sorry. Good communication skills involved. I like to see involvement in the community. I really appreciate what they're doing right now with uh, coffee with the council. 
but I think we need to show up at the celebrations that we have here in the city as well to, to um, begin to heal our community and bring us together as a community. Thank you. And thanks for letting me do this. Thank you. And Mr. Ellis, major thanks response. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for having me today. It's really, this is a lot of fun for me. The major responsibilities of the office have to do with setting the budget annually for the city of Michael Teo, setting policies and procedures for the city, as well as looking at the long-term view via the comprehensive plan of what the city should be. What is our vision for the city? Skills necessary to perform this job well, the, the most, the highest level priority skill is being able to communicate, mainly on the listening side, being able to listen comprehensively and with understanding. That includes communicating and touching not only the vocal minority that you hear from all the time, but reaching out to the diversity of the full citizenship and picking up what the silent minority is thinking and where, where they're at on things. Uh, included in that skill set is understanding the financial things that go on, being able to understand the books, how things are going, how, are, how is the plan going along each year, as well in, as being involved in looking at the full financial plan and seeing how things are going over multiple years. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. And um, the next question is, what are two or three major issues that need to be addressed by the Muckleteo City Council. We'll start with Mr. Croco. Mr. Croco, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Got it. Uh, the discussion about the HAP exposed serious disagreements about the vision for Muckleteo. We need to get more people involved with the details of the comprehensive plan zoning decisions and what that will mean for the character of Mukilteo. Uh, Mukilteo's growth has strained the infrastructure and we need to look at how the increased traffic, uh, both uh, auto traffic and pedestrians are interacting on our roads. Specifically, I'm thinking about sidewalks and crosswalks that connect older neighborhoods to schools. And the third thing, the third issue that I'm concerned about, uh, the housing prices in Mukilteo have soared. Uh, this reflects the many strengths that Mukilteo has as a place to live and work and raise a family. We need to look at ways to ensure that seniors and lower income families are not pushed out of the community. Thank you. And um, Mr. Ellis, you're next. The two or three major issues. I, I'm going to start off with one major issue and then spread that out like a tree with its branches. Climate change is the big thing I'm always wa watching for and I'm aware of. There's two elements to climate change that we can deal with at, at a worldwide level, but also at a community level. That has to do with mitigation to climate change, which is narrowing and, and shrinking our carbon footprint, the carbon dioxide that we release, basically. The other side of the coin is adaptation making adaptation or changes to account for and deal with the climate events that hit us. One is that heat wave we just went through. Some people had to, well, we moved out of our house when it got hot on Monday, we had to go down and, and stay with a, a, a relative that had AC. I didn't realize I'd be a climate refugee this soon. But that overlying view of climate change can affect the decisions we make elsewhere in the city. For example, down on the waterfront, we're doing development. We're looking at maybe different plants to put in we should be selecting carbon sequestering plants that go there. Thank you, your time is up. And um, Mr. Smaltz, your answer to that question? Yeah, there's, there's a, a few major issues that um, the council needs to, to take a look at. And, and one is, is making sure that we are financially secure and we're on a good sound, um, Found financially on a, on a foundation to do all these uh, priorities or issues that come up that we have the funds and we're able to to be able to to do those specifically I look to um, resident residential neighborhoods such as traffic calming and some of the traffic issues that we're having in some of the residential neighborhoods we have a 16 percent solution rate on our traffic calming uh, program that's that's insufficient. That's unacceptable. We need to improve that. Uh, we need to also look to 
uh, improve our waterfront access, pedestrian safety and traffic going into the waterfront areas that with the ferry terminal just moving, there's been issues there that need to be addressed. Um, okay, thank fun. you. Your time sure. is up. And Ms. Carlson, your uh, two or three major issues that need to be addressed? Well, I immediately thought of rebuilding community because we, what we've just been through, and uh, I think that's happening. Um, helping local businesses recover. Uh, I'd also like to take a look at Rose Hill use. Uh, seniors use it part time. They don't have use of the kitchen. Uh, the council had something to do with that. Rose Hill has to make money. That's a long story. I won't go there. But the seniors need more attention. I appreciate it. Forgive me. It was Al Alex or ten. I think it was Alex said we need to um, make sure seniors can stay here and live here and not be taxed out of their home or uh, forced out of their home because they can no longer care for it. So that's that's my concern. Those are my big issues. Thank you. Okay, and keep your keep your mute off because you get the first crack at the next question. What qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate, Ms. Carlson? And that's when we have 90 seconds for? No, this is still one minute. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, I've, I've served on a lot of different boards in uh, our city and uh, have learned a lot about the operation of our city. Uh, I was on that housing action plan committee, um, and I understand the good that came out of it, although it had a lot of, again, uh, bad press. Uh, served on a lighthouse festival. A lot, a lot of the, the community garden uh, right now, president of the seniors, uh, local Kiwanis. So I've had a lot of leadership positions in this town. I know a lot of people and I know how to listen and how to get things done and how to move forward. Um, I, I think that's it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And um, this next question, uh, oh, and Mr. Ellis, what qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate? Um, most recent, well, most recently, I was chair of the Mukilteo Climate Action Committee. That was from 2019 into 2020. I'm proud of that I took the nine volunteers, in, including two city councilmen, through a year of getting ready and doing a first report to the council, and then a COVID year of putting together a second final report that we put out. That included a day one plan that I thought was was really well done. I've been a beach watcher since 2015, and I lead the activities down at Mucklefield Lighthouse Park, both the youth education events that go on there as well as the naturalist events. I've been a member of the Snohomish County Marine Resource Council. I'm in my second year of that position, and recently got on the Parks and Arts Commission with Ms. Carlson a few months ago and having a really good time doing that. Got a lot of background and financial statements with my work at the company as a supplier cost management, as well as in cost management. Oh, and resident for 37 years. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. And uh, what experience makes you a strong candidate, Mr. Schmaltz? Well, I was elected to the city council uh, twice uh, in 2011 and 2015 served as city council president in 2018. Um, but I also have um, experience working with residents and the council to solve their issues, um, such as uh, parking issues in neighborhoods. Uh, we're able to initiate policy uh, to solve those issues. The parking passes that folks get uh, in their meal every couple of years so they can park it down a lighthouse park came through a council initiated uh, policy that was started by myself back in 2013. Um, also um, able to put in speed humps in various neighborhoods to uh, slow down traffic and, and help uh, keep pedestrians safe. So there's a lot of things of working both with the council and the residents um, to solve their issues. And, um, and so thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. And Mr. Krakow, what qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate? Uh, this is my first campaign for elected office, uh, but I do have more than 30 years of leadership experience gained through the Army, operations, manufacturing, business consulting, and church leadership. 
Uh, I'm comfortable leading and participating in cross-functional problem-solving teams. I'm a skilled facilitator, comfortable asking tough questions in a contentious setting, looking for agreement and a path forward. I'm comfortable working with budgets, looking at the ways in which we can use money to best support our values. Uh, I'm skilled at working with the wisdom of the group, and now I'm looking for an opportunity to use these skills uh, to serve Makotia. Thank you. Now, um, you will have 90 seconds to answer this final question. And we'll start with Mr. Ellis. What have we neglected to ask that you would like to bring to our attention and talk a little bit more about? Wow, what have you neglected to ask? Let's expand a little bit more on the implications of what the climate activity is doing to the city and how it can affect us in the future. Some of the things that we found out uh, on the Climate Action Committee. I always look out to the marine waters to our west to see what's happening there because that's sometimes a gauge of, of what might be coming to us. We've recently, and I, when I say recently, over the last three to four years, lost the bull kelp beds that used to exist off of Mokotil Lighthouse Park and down to Nikita Beach. They've uh, basically disappeared there. We're seeing the same thing around Puget Sound. The state legislature's really recently given more funds to find out more about what's going on and what might be causing that. But we, we fear it might be climate related. We, um, you can see the new ferry terminal has gone in. It's on slightly higher ground than the old ferry terminal to account for the expected sea level rise that's going to be coming. So I see the level rise will be affecting us, directly affecting a lot of the things that's, that are down in the waterfront now, including the houses along Nikita Beach. We've got um, acid acidification in the marine water. We're trying to figure out what's going on there. Plus you've got the climate events that are happening here, including the warming that's going on, uh, or the recent warming event. There was a lightning strike that came through a couple of years ago that people might remember that shut down the UW game. That's another thing that we've got to sort of figure out how to adapt to. Thank nice. you for your time. And, and Mr. Krakow, it's your turn. You will have 90 seconds. What have we neglected to ask you that you would like to bring to our attention? Thank you. Uh, I think the pandemic exposed gaps in the way we educate children, protect workers and care for our seniors. Um, I think COVID showed us the things that many children and their, and their parents rely on schools to provide. I think COVID showed us who could work safely from home and who had to show up and work in person. I think COVID showed us how much the simple activities of daily living can expose our seniors. Uh, I saw firsthand uh, the things that my wife, a teacher at Olympic, uh, Olympic View Middle School and her coworkers did to fill these gaps individually and in cooperation with the school system. We need to ask tough questions about the things we learn and develop community approaches that address these gaps. Thank you. And Ms. Carlson, what would you like to bring to our attention? Well, thank you for that opportunity. I'm, I'm gonna uh, go again to the, the seniors. Uh, I'm part of a group that meets once a month from other senior centers and they actually have a senior center. And the reason I want one here, and uh, I, sh I, I have to say Mr. Krakow and Mr. Ellis have listened to me and understand that it's not about just coffee. It's about caring. It's about healthcare. It's about socializing. It's about providing vaccines. All of the senior centers were providing vaccines for their members. I got a hold of our mayor and said, why can't we do this? And three weeks later, we did at Rose Hill. I was so grateful she moved that quickly. But those are the things that we could offer. And it's critical to have that for our senior community and also to, to have mental health uh, and uh, intergenerational experiences. We're gonna work with Kristen Hammer and she's gonna use one of our room for a few hours every day. We get to go in there, play with the kids, talk to the kids, color. Uh, it's going to be a great thing, and and we're hoping to uh, get that. And that's really, I I love this city, and I care about a lot of issues. But I, I'm a senior, so that's my um, my main thing. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, and Mr. Schmaltz. 
Yeah, I'd like to kind of um, expound on some of the things that I talked about earlier. Um, and one is um, the policy, at, and we talked a little bit about uh, climate change was brought up and the, the, the heat uh, wave that we had last week. And, you know, what was, what was interesting was that our, we need a, a policy, I think, set by the council about when public facilities should be open and when the trigger point is they should be open during uh, emergencies such as the heat wave. Our community center was only open a handful of hours during the weekend. I know it was open late on Monday, but that was because of the residents um, voicing their concern to the, to the, to the city officials. So it was closed early on Sunday when the heat was getting towards 100 degrees. And so I think we need to have a policy on that as well as um, you know some of the other issues as uh, and somebody brought up the seniors um, and we do need a policy on the seniors and I was been an advocate for the seniors long before when I first got on the council helping the seniors get um, storage and at Rose Hill and and the facility at the Christensen room and so been always a big supporter of the of the seniors in 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 that regard so those are some of the things that i think we need to expand on as well as having a clear understanding thank of what you. the council does thank you and a recording of this forum will be available on the league of women voters website as well as uh the U our youtube channel and will be aired on kscr 90.7 fm you can find the full schedule of candidate forums at lwvsnoho.org. That's for the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County. We encourage everyone to explore additional information about these and all candidates. The Snohomish County voter pamphlet will be mailed to residences starting July 14th, and primary election ballots will be mailed on July 15th. Election day is August 3rd. Please vote. And thank you all for joining us.